So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is assemble this hinge that I got from Amazon. This is going to allow the lid of the coffee table to just kind of come up and back. It's spring loaded. So you can have stuff sitting on the coffee table while it's uh, coming up and you can access whatever you're storing inside of it. So this thing did not come with instructions, but I kind of just laid it out. Um, obviously the springs are going to go here from one hook to the other. You're going to have to stretch those on. Um, the other thing you're going to do is take these bolts that come with it and put it through these holes here so that this torsion bar will allow both sides of the hinge to operate at the same angle at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this thing and get it put together. So when looking at the reviews for Amazon, loading the springs onto it was one of the largest complaints. Obviously there are no instructions, people didn't know how to go about this. So what I did was I have this assembled, so it gives me a little bit more leverage to work on. And uh, I went ahead and put it in the open position because that's the position in which the distance between the two posts is the shortest. So that means you don't, don't have to pull the spring as hard to get it to put in position. Then I went ahead and clamped it onto a pair of vice grips just like this. Now you want the fatter part of the spring to be going towards the inside so it's not sticking out past the side of the, spring, the uh, hinge. If you put it the other way, uh, it sticks out a little bit more. So I wanted to put it inside like this so that um, it was more out of the way. Now I'm going to go ahead and put down the camera just on the side. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. It's actually not too terribly difficult. Okay, I think you guys can see right there. So all I'm going to do is step on this side here. Go ahead and hook the spring into the one post, just pull it up, put it on the other post, and then release your vice grips. Not too terribly difficult. It looks like this hinge mounts from the bottom. Let me take a look at it over here. Looks like it mounts from the bottom, so I'm going to have to put a board that's going to lay kind of like this where this can bolt to. And it only came with two bolts per side, so that kind of stinks. You can buy more if you like. But I'll just put one in the front, one in the back, and then I use screws to hold it up onto the top. So that means I will have to run some boards this way for that to mount to from the underside. But I think what I'm gonna do is cut just like a little square of material, I'll fix that to the side here, and then have the other piece of wood just kind of sit on top of that and use a screw on either side to hold it in position. That way, if I need to get to that hinge or whatever and work on it and remove it, I can just remove it all in one piece by taking out the four screws. So that's gonna be my plan. Uh, but I'm gonna start with the trim, go ahead and get that done. Okay, so I've set my hinge into position and I've measured the distance between this corner here and this corner here, allowing enough room, the hinge to be able to move it's going to be 19 inches is how far apart this needs to be. So what I'm going to do is measure the inside distance between these two inner pieces here, subtract 19 inches and divide by two. And that will tell me how far across this needs to be. Um, and that will be measuring from the inside edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that math, make some marks, put my uh, hinge up to it, make sure the math works out before I go ahead and mounting my little pieces. So I went ahead and cut little squares from the um, one by two that I had, the uh, select pine. And I'm gonna go ahead and mount those to the side right here, just using a little wood glue and some nails. And then I'll be able to screw the other piece right on top where it's gonna uh, be held in position. That way, if I need to pull everything out and work on it, I can do that. I don't know why I would ever have to do that, but. I'm just kind of planning for the future to make sure it is able to be worked on. Okay, so I've taken all my measurements, sized everything up, everything is gonna fit just right. I've gone ahead and cut my cross boards here. I've got those at 21 and a half, and as you can see, they fit perfectly. 
They just kind of fit right in there without anything holding them. I've got these cut out and the distance from this edge to this edge is 13 and a half. So what I'm gonna do now is use a little bit of wood glue and put these into position. But I'm also gonna have these in position as well because I've noticed that the thickness of the, uh, the select pine is a little different than the common board. So I'm gonna use wood clamps to kind of hold everything in position, but I want the upper surface to be more flush than the lower surface. I notice there's a little bit of overhang on the bottom side. Now I'm gonna use a little wood glue, my nail gun, put a nail here and a nail here. I wanna avoid the center part because that's where I'm gonna run my screw to hold this in position when everything's in there. So what I've done now is I found some screws to hold this all in with, and I'm gonna go ahead and drill some pilot holes through the top and bottom, and then I'm gonna take a larger drill bit and drill through this top piece of wood just so that um, this can go through there without risk of splitting the wood at all. Then from here, it's just a matter of driving the screw in so it holds it in position. I want this to be held in position before I start trying to mess around with the spring because I don't want this thing flopping around and having the spring all over the place. I want the spring to be secure. So I'm gonna do this on all four holes. So I've got this bolted in position. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and drill a couple of holes to mount this hinge to. I'm gonna use this hole and this hole. I was only provided two bolts in the kit so that's what I'm gonna use. But it looks like this needs to be a half inch over from this edge. I measured that on both sides and it's a half inch on both. And then I want this to be about an inch and a half this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark those holes, drill them out. And then I'll measure the distance from here to here so I can put the other hole there as well and go ahead and mount this spring. So actually I went ahead and got the idea to flip the hinge over. And if I flip the hinge over, I can look where I marked my holes and then go ahead and just mark them out where they need to be. If you wanna take the time to drill more holes and put more screws in, that may help, although I don't think it'll make any difference. I'm just gonna put one in the front, one in the back, that should be sufficient to hold it in place. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I've got my springs mounted, and there's one thing I've noticed here, and that is the gap between the side here as it moves towards my body, I guess. You see how the gap gets larger? And I think it's even more pronounced on this side. As I move down, you see how the gap gets wider. And that's because there's nothing on this bracket right here holding it in position the way it is over here. So I think what I'm going to do at this point is go ahead and stop what I'm doing and go to either Lowe's or Home Depot and grab another bar and a couple more screws. That way it holds this hinge in position. Because what I was going to do was uh, measure from the side of the box to the center of this hole to find out where I needed to mount the screws to the bottom of my table. But if this hinge isn't staying straight, then I needed to work out that issue first. I was thinking I could maybe just mount the table to it and it wouldn't matter, but the problem with that is it's going to be different on each side and then the tabletop may not sit straight when either the lids close or when the lids open. So I want to put something in here to straighten this out I'm gonna get the same exact length bar and uh, make sure I square up this hinge before I go any further. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, we will continue this later. Okay, so I've gone to the hardware store and I picked up this aluminum tube. It's three quarter inch by three feet. I think it was about 15 bucks. I also picked up uh, some nuts and bolts that are the right length 
and everything to uh, attach it to the hinge. And I also picked up some wood screws for attaching the top. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out the length I need this to be. Go ahead and cut that down to size, and drill some holes that are a proper size for these bolts to go through, and mount it onto the hinge. Next, I'm going to center this on the mounting brackets. Just mark where I need my holes to be. I'm going to go right in the center of where the brackets go. That way, I can move it one side or the other to kind of center it out if I need to. So first, I will drill some pilot holes. Then holes large enough for the bolts to fit through. So one thing to watch out for as you're making a little secondary bracket is you can see right here I'm getting an interference right where this little piece here is contacting that so it's not allowing the hinge to open up all the way. So I'm going to have to cut that little notch out, kind of notch it a little bit just so that the hinge will open all the way. Because right now you can see that's bottomed out and the hinge is not open its full length. So I'm going to have to take that back off and notch it out. So I went ahead and just cut a whole section of that off. And when I tightened this down, what I did was I took a flat bladed screwdriver and just stuck it down in there to kind of space it away from there. So the next thing I'm gonna do, now that I've got it where my hinge opens all the way, is I'm gonna go ahead and push this down. Easier said than done. Be careful, it's spring loaded. So what I'm gonna do is push this down. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a uh, a straight edge here. This is gonna be a little tricky so I don't have to go off camera for this. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push this down until the straight edge makes contact with the surface. That way I can find out exactly where this sits, the distance from the edge to there. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, set my board on top and make sure I center it perfectly on the, uh, the coffee table. And then from there, I will put a mark on the bottom of the board. Well, I guess I'll have to also measure, I'll measure the distance from this edge to that first hole, and then this edge to that first hole. And that'll give me um, where I need relative, relative to that. So then what I'll do is put this board on top, make sure everything's centered, and I'll make marks where those two edges are at. That way I can measure from those marks to where I need that hole to be. What I'm gonna use here, is I've got some one inch long uh, number eight wood screws. So I'll just kind of pre-drill the hole in that location. And then uh, I'll mount the board, open the hinge, and then mark where the other holes need to be. 
I went ahead and got three of these for each side. And what I'm probably going to have to do is since I've kind of built this with like hollow space in here, I'm probably going to have to put a couple strips of uh, wood right here so I have something to attach the screws to. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself at this point. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop this down, take some measurements, put the board on, mark where the edges are, make sure it's centered and everything, take it from there. So what I've done is I've just taken a couple of clamps to hold this down. This will hold the hinge in place and I can take my measurements to this first hole right here. So here you can see what I've done. I went ahead and marked out the edges after everything was centered. Measured 16 and 5 eighths to my center here. And then I marked some reference line lines uh, three quarters of an inch to either side. That way I can just take my little pieces of wood here. That's a tight fit. I might, yeah, I'm gonna have to trim that off a little bit. It's a little too snug. Yeah, just a little. So I'm gonna have to trim these off a little bit. But you get the point, what I'm gonna do is run some wood glue down here, pop a couple little nails in it. Um, and that's about it. I'll be ready to go ahead and mount this thing to the bracket after that. Uh, but I'll go ahead and get these on there. The next thing I'll do is measure for my reference line. I think it was six and three eighths is my distance here. Make sure that's centered. That's where I'm gonna drill my first pilot hole for the bracket and I'll set it on top of the bracket, mark out the position for the rest of the holes and uh, mount that thing to the hinge. We'll be in business here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, show you what I've got. So I've gone ahead and run those boards, centered it, made my mark, pre-drilled my hole and uh, went ahead and put that first screw in there. And what I'm gonna do at this point is go ahead and lower Kind of difficult to do one-handed lower the tabletop now and before i go mark and put in place the rest of those screws and everything i'm just going to make sure that everything still looks centered and that we're still on my marks that i made earlier so looks like these marks line up okay it's a little difficult to tell with the sides though because it's not sitting all the way down but uh, it actually looks like we're good. I'm gonna check the other side, just to make sure that one looks good. Yeah, that one looks pretty good. So I think I'll go ahead and mark the rest of the holes and go ahead and get this thing secured.